Bad news, friends. Everything science has taught us about women is wrong. Okay, well, not everything, just mostly everything. Well, okay, no, just everything about women that has been discovered by French social psychologist Nicolas Guggen, who publishes 10 to 20 studies every year on a variety of topics mostly related to how hot women are, uh, how they might be able to get hotter, and what sort of stuff they can get for free by being so damn hot. For instance, are men more likely to approach a woman and ask her out if she's wearing high heels? Are men more likely to help a woman who's wearing high heels? Are men more likely to pick up a female hitchhiker if she's wearing a sexy color? And if that last one has you wondering, wait, what's the sexiest color? Obviously, you are not well versed in evolutionary psychology because everyone knows the sexiest color is red because of berries or labia or something. Everyone also knows the least sexy color is puce, both because of the name and because that's the color of your poop when something has gone terribly wrong. Two researchers, James Heathers and Nick Brown, have been on Guggen's case for literally the past four years. Uh, I've had loving relationships that have died before that length of time has passed. Uh, It's kind of impressive. They started investigating him after seeing a story about a study claiming that men are less likely to help a woman if her hair is up in a ponytail. They saw that his data looked real sketchy, and that led them to looking at his other studies, and now they've been ripping him to shreds for four years. The worst part is that during this time, he has continued publishing papers at an incredible clip, uh, many of which do get media attention. So over the course of those four years, their workload has grown by like 50 new studies. Nobody can fact check 50 new studies in four years, let alone competently oversee and publish them. And that was Guggen's secret. He wasn't competently overseeing the studies that he was publishing under his name. He was letting psychology students do those studies and then not checking their work or bothering to credit them in the publication. According to one anonymous student, those students had absolutely no idea what they were doing and they just made up the data in order to get the homework done. Now, one of his studies has finally been retracted. It turns out that maybe men are not more likely to help a woman just because she's wearing high heels, which, as Nick Brown points out over on Twitter, makes this HuffPo headline delightful in retrospect. High heels increase a woman's attractiveness, and for once, it's not a bogus survey. Oh, sweetie. I find this whole thing to be pretty bizarre because... Obviously, people find high heels attractive. Uh, men do, women do. It's not just a coincidence that Victoria's Secret angels aren't stomping down the runway in Doc Martens. And at the same time, many men and women don't find them sexy. Those people are just outside of the cultural majority opinion. But like an ex of mine, for instance, hated to see them because he thought that they looked silly and uncomfortable, which they are. Uh, but in general, yeah, our society, Western, mostly white, American, and European, we think high heels are hot in general. Uh, other cultures might not. Hell, Europeans particularly used to think that heels were very sexy for men, too. Uh, not anymore, though, because cultures change, uh, beauty norms shift around. This isn't groundbreaking. The only interesting thing here was whether or not people find heels uh, not just sexy, but whether or not they're more likely to help someone who's wearing heels. And I should add help not related to the heels themselves, because honestly, I'm probably more likely to give up my seat on the subway to a woman if she's wearing eight inch heels at the end of the day, because that shit hurts. But in this case, it was just a woman walking down the street uh, who dropped a glove. And then Guigen, or his students, or no one at all, uh, recorded how often the people behind her picked up the glove and tried to give it back to her. He claimed that the higher her heel, the more likely a man would help her out. 
women were uninfluenced by heel height, apparently, because I guess we're all heteros or just immune to the power of high heels, regardless of our sexuality, or because we don't pick and choose who to help based upon who we find sexually attractive. And that is the real kind of hidden sexism at play with this garbage. Um, because yes, there is the reinforcement of the idea that there is one way for a woman to be sexy. Uh, and if you don't adhere to that way, then you will be punished by society. And that sucks. Um, there's also the idea that sexy women get more stuff than everyone else. And that's sexist and that sucks. But then there's the idea that men are drooling morons who would never stop to help someone just to help someone, that they will only help someone if there's some sort of sexual transaction happening, if they can get some sort of sexual reward for anything involving any kind of effort. Uh, in the world of Gigen, men are just dicks with legs that are there to carry them around in the hopes of getting the dick wet. Um, that's insulting. And this is all sexist to everyone, regardless of gender. So it's very damaging to both men and women, and it's damaging to pop psychology. Uh, I used to be so into reading pop psych books. My bookshelf is still full of them, but... It's really hard for me to read those now because so many of the studies discussed in them uh, have turned out to be nothing more than good headlines that have never been reproduced. In some cases like this, they've even been retracted, but you can't really update a physical book with an asterisk. Not that any of the online news sources that reported on this study have been updated, uh, even though that is easily accomplished. And Brown has even been tweeting at many of the journalists who wrote about it, but he hasn't found much success. And in fact, the writer for The Telegraph just blocked him. So that's not to say social psychology as a whole is trash. There's so much great research coming out, and I try to talk about the good stuff when I see it. But let me tell you, it's really hard to find research that is well done, replicable, and interesting enough for a lay audience to appreciate without it necessarily being life-changing. So, so much of social psychology is based on these very small effects. And that's why you need to be skeptical of any headline that is claiming that a new study shows some monumental, never before seen discovery about human nature. It might have just been made up by some students looking to get a C to graduate. Uh, thank you so much to Mark for pointing this out to me on Twitter. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon for your uh, suggestions and feedback. If you'd like to become a patron, go over to patreon.com slash Rebecca. Uh, it's a great community over there. And I really appreciate all of you who have been supporting me. Thanks, guys.